My name is Father Scott Woods. I'm from the Archdiocese of uh, Washington, D.C. Um, I'm a priest of two small parishes, a chaplain to a high school and a college. When I was in high school, for me, prayer was very rote, and, and uh, I, I knew the Lord somewhat, but I, I didn't have that closeness, I didn't have that intimacy that other people, like my grandmother, would talk about this deep intimacy with the Lord. And I thought, started thinking, everyone says you should be your best friend, but how in the world uh, do you become best friends with someone you can't see, touch, or feel? And I'm sure it was the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It just hit me one day, well, you hate washing dishes and walking the dog, and these are monotonous tasks. Why not talk to Jesus at those times like you would to your best friend? Center yourself in the reality of his presence, whether you're outside or in the kitchen. If no one's around, you can talk out loud. If someone's around, I'll just talk in my heart. At first, it felt weird for a while, but then more and more, I really began to experience that presence of the Lord, his love for me. And it really transformed everything, so much to the point where probably about six months, seven months later, I remember one day sitting going, I can't wait till I can wash the dishes or walk the dog. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? And I realized it's not those things, it's the encounter, it's the relationship with the person of Jesus. And that that then changed everything else. I do a lot of what's called spiritual direction, which is helping young adults and young people to grow closer to our Lord, um, particularly through um, deepening their prayer lives. And so we meet once every two weeks, and I try to help them with uh, developing particularly a, a plan of life. And that usually involves first their prayer life. Um, I often tell them um, in the morning time, just give God five minutes to center yourself in the presence of the Father, God the Father. And, and that he's with you, that he loves you, that he desires to spend time with you. Um, thank him for getting up, even if it's a miserable day or you're not looking forward to the day, you can at least go, okay, Lord, but I'm alive and this is a gift. And so thank him for that. And then I tell them to uh, pray for their, uh, their, the needs of those they love, the world, and then to ask prayers for themselves, not only the things they, they need, but even the things they desire. Trusting though, that it's not like magic, I'm not seeking that God do my will, but if these prayers are for my, truly for my and others' uh, ultimate salvation, that these be granted. And if not, that's fine, you know. Um, and then I ask them in the afternoon, sometime in the afternoon between 12 and 5 or dinner time, to take some time again to uh, particularly talk to Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, to center themselves first in his presence again, and then just to talk from the heart, you know, what is what would you say to your best friend? He should be your best friend. So the, the good, the bad, the ugly, the people that drive you crazy, the things you're looking forward to, things that worry you, just to open your heart and spill it out. Because in that process, even though at first you're not gonna feel anything, when you open your heart, God opens his heart and pours it into grace. And over time, there will come a point when they'll even begin to hear the interior voice, and sometimes even exterior voice of the Lord, uh, whether, whether through another person or through a circumstance. And then I tell them just to give God, again, five more minutes in the evening time, uh, preferably sometime after dinner and before they, it gets too late and they're tired. And I tell them, okay, what you want to do is center yourself in the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who dwells within you, who's with you and loves you. And then I tell them just to review the day for all the blessings. You know, it says in Scripture, every good thing comes from the Lord. So think about all those blessings you receive. Even just waking up in the morning, even the everyday blessings, which are the, really the greatest ones, the family that loves you, friends, all those things, but also the smaller ones, you know, you got to school without the car breaking down, the bus came and picked you up, uh, maybe there was something lunch you liked, a class went well, uh, a friend smiled with you, whatever, the large and small, thank God, and recognize all these are from Him. Then go back through the day and review, the, review your conscience for sins of omission. What are the things I, I should have said or should have done that maybe I held back because of fear, uh, because of laziness? Ask forgiveness for that. What are the sins of commission, the, the thoughts I allowed, to, the negative thoughts I allowed to stay in my head? The negative words I said are the negative actions that I did towards others. Ask forgiveness for each of those. This prepares you in two ways, I always tell them. It prepares you, first of all, the next day to, to live a better life, to make better decisions. But it also prepares you for the day of your death, which we never know when it'll come. But there'll be a day when we don't open our eyes again. And even if we weren't sadly able to get to confession first, we at least had that heart and mind set upon the Lord, and he was able to know of our sorrow. And so, and that really just takes five minutes, five, ten minutes as you get to know it better. 
And everyone can give, what, 15, maybe 20, 30 minutes to the Lord. It'll never take away from your studies. It'll never take away from your fun. But it'll give you so much grace. And the Lord will more and more fill your life with his joy.